and welcome everybody. This is a very exciting live stream coming to you from Vietnam on Selling Smarter by Knowing What to Pitch. Uh, I think we have audiences today joining us from across the Asia Pacific region, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia and other countries. So welcome to each and every one of you. Um, I have amazing guests with me today on the set. Uh, but before I introduce the panelists, a couple of uh, quick things for you to note. Throughout this entire conversation, you can throw some questions at our panelists. There is a Q&A box, so type your question into that. We have a team here that's gathering all these questions, monitoring, and they'll be passing it on to me. So later in this conversation, I will be presenting those questions to our panelists. Also, you will be getting a recording of this live stream once the recording is done once this live stream is done and you can refer back to it or share it with friends and colleagues. So once again, welcome to this live stream from Vietnam. And let me begin by introducing the panelists to you. We have Roy Ung, who is the director from Lenovo Asia Pacific SMB channel. Welcome to the show, Roy. Thank you. We have George Chaco, director global account Asia Pacific and Japan from Intel. Thank you. Hi, Roy. And we have Amit Bhatia, who is Senior Analyst, Customer Experience from Forrester. Thanks. Thanks, Lakshmi. Great to have each of you here. Um, so let me begin by setting the context. As a small and medium business partner, um, how best can you address what your customers need? How best do you go about understanding what they need, understanding what their employees need? And how do you go about advising them on how to choose technology and why is this important you know why is it important to understand why do employees choose an organization why do they stay what makes them leave what does technology play in 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 this whole context so that's what we're going to be talking about and we're going to be deep diving into this and i think it's very important to know about each of the rich experiences that the panelists bring to the table today and what they think is sort of the one thing transforming the Asian workspace today. So Roy, I'd like to begin with you. Please yes. tell us about your experience and the one thing that you think is, <coughs> is transforming the workplace in Asia today. So first of all, let me briefly introduce my professional experience. Uh, so I've always been in the uh, technology industry over the past 17 years. Uh, most recently over the past four years with uh, Lenovo, uh, very engaged into the SMB business. Uh, working in the region called Central Asia Pacific, working closely with a lot of business partners. And if you ask me what are the trends and you know the, what is going to shape the future in terms of technology and in terms of the user experience, maybe I give an analogy around what happened at home. Okay. I'm actually a teenage boy and uh, some years ago you know the, we are actually looking at giving him a uh, work uh, laptop right, to actually uh, bring it to school. But prior to that, right, when he was a lot younger, he has already been using you know, other devices, smartphone, tablets, you know, for the purpose of uh, entertainment and also for the purpose of some education. So he's very used to the touch uh, user interface. And when I give him a traditional clamshell notebook, uh, the first thing that actually he tries to do is to try to touch on the banner. And he sees that hey, actually nothing moves. And uh, then he came back to me and said, Hey daddy, is there something wrong with the notebook? <laughs> so exactly, I think, you know, the user experience will shape uh, what is expected out from future devices. Got it. So, I mean, behavior is changing very early on. Yes. You know, yeah. And kids yeah. adopted much earlier. Fantastic. George, tell me about your work experience and, and the one thing that you're seeing. Uh, Lakshmi, I started my life as a, a brand researcher and then went into the technology space. Last 20 years in the technology space with, uh, with a couple of companies. Um, been with Intel for about 14 years now and uh, have done a variety of product and uh, sales and marketing roles. Uh, at present in core selling uh -huh. and um, part of my uh, core uh, customers are SMBs and enterprise. So a topic that really interests me. Thank Fantastic. you for having me here. Um, from uh, uh, what I see in the space right now, I really think that uh, SMBs are in a hyper competitive uh, environment today. And therefore, they are more and more realizing that they've got to be ahead 
of the pack in terms of the technology that they're adopting in order to be ahead. So um, that's the big thing that I'm, I'm seeing these days. Got it. Okay. And you know, you, you mentioned that you're in hardcore sales. I'm going to come back and pick your brains on that later <coughs> in the conversation. Sure. sure. I mean, tell us about you. Uh, so like you said, I'm, a, I'm an analyst. I cover ex, uh, customer experience. So I've sort of always been in the experience space. So I began my career in the world of user experience. And uh, uh, after many years, uh, you know, being in that field, I got a business degree and I switched to customer experience. A very exciting field, right? Um, so I've been with Forrester for almost four years now, covering uh, customer experience for them. And uh, now I cover uh, also employee experience across APAC because we see that that's a really big thing that's coming out uh, uh, globally as well as in APAC. So uh, I look at customer experience and, and uh, employee experience. It's very interesting how you transition from customer experience to employee experience. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back sure. to that. That's going to be you know, my first question to you. But before that, I just want to take a moment for all of us to consider how just in the last 10 years so much has changed about how we use technology. 10 years ago, I, I didn't use my mobile phone so much. You know, I didn't live with it. I, my relationships weren't run. My home wasn't run using my phone, right? Uh, now it's with me 24-7, except for when I really want to switch off and I want to sleep. Um, and if you look around you, both at home and in the workplace, a lot has changed, right? Um, what is that one thing or one moment where you said, oh my God, that's, that did not happen before, you know, something around technology? Over the past decades, uh, we definitely see that the workflow of uh, the businesses have actually changed. Right? Specifically in the SMB <coughs> environment, be it you are from a back office, or whether you are in manufacturing, or we say even the farmer, right? With the information around the uh, internet of things on surveillance, you know, the farmer even changed the way that actually they harvest their crops. So workflow has definitely changed with automation yeah. and uh, you know enhanced system capability. So businesses that were not traditionally technology dependent are using technology yes. a lot more and that changes everything in terms of how employees use Absolutely. technology, exactly. how much more technology needs to be, you know, sort of a software needs to be accessed and how and where. Very, very interesting point. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'll give you uh, two examples, one from, um, from the home and one from my work life. Okay. Um, really um, caught my attention. One is. At home, I've got a teenage daughter and I see her switching between the Mac and Windows uh, environments and seamlessly and she looks at me when I struggle going from one to the other thinking what a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> and on the other side, you know, at the workplace, so that's the positive side where people are really taking to technology. On the other side, at, uh, at work, I have a colleague who takes a, a two-week uh, sabbatical, so to say, from uh, from technology, takes no phones, you know, just goes off and just detoxes. Yeah, digital, you know, that's the digital fast. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the other side, the the wow. the bad side, so to say, of technology and the and the prevalence of technology in our lives. That it's everywhere, all the time. Absolutely, got it. Uh, so if, you know, if you ask me about my aha moment when I realized that technology has seriously changed the way I behave. Um, so I, I remember this was the time when I was sitting waiting at a doctor's uh, place and you know what do we do when we're at the doctors typically we pick up a magazine that's there typically outdated right and you are sort of flipping through hey uh, you know uh, reading stuff uh, and I was looking at a at a picture in this printed magazine and I couldn't see it clearly so I decided to use my fingers and I'm, I'm trying to zoom it like this you know with my fingers and after a second or two, I'm like, you know, you know, what am I doing here? Like, this is a magazine. I, I, there's no way this picture is going to zoom. And that's when it hit me that the way I, I behave is has changed so drastically because of day-to-day, uh, -day, um, you know, technology. Our habits have changed yeah, habits a lot. Have changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like muscle memory has changed, right? You think about when you zoom in, uh, instead of doing this, you're, you're using your fingers. So to, I, I struggle to write more than one or two sentences now. My hand hurts because I'm, I'm used to typing, yeah, so exactly. everything's, everything's around My the keyboard My handwriting was now. bad to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> you don't no. want to see what I've written. <laughs> Let's look. <laughs> okay, so I think that's a very interesting start. So if you talk about what SMBs are dealing with today, they're dealing with a more connected world, where they're dealing with 
um, software themselves, they're more and more technology oriented or run using technology. A lot more of the employees need to be connected, need to use software. And they may not be connected and doing their work from a desk or from an office environment anymore. People are a lot more mobile now. So what does this mean in terms of, you know, the, the solutions that are relevant for an SMB today in the Asian market? What does this mean in terms of what is right for their employees? I think understanding this becomes very important in, in being a really good channel partner, right? Um, so you mentioned employee experience earlier, yeah. right? Customer experience and then you went into employee experience. Right. And today's conversation is about <clears throat> employee experience. But what do we mean when we say employee experience? So I think that's a good uh, starting point, right? Because um, it can mean different things to different people. And we, we speak to a lot of organizations about employee experience and we never get the same uh, answer from them when we ask them, hey, what do you think is employee experience? So always different answers. So it's great for this discussion. Uh, we begin with a you know simple understanding, common understanding of what employee experience actually means. Now, if you think about the traditional way of employee experience, right? The, typical HR perspective has been about the hire to retire. You think about the employee life cycle, uh, you know, what is the experience when a when an employee comes in, what is the onboarding experience, then uh, let's do like these yearly surveys to understand, you know, how our employees feel, are they satisfied, all of those things, and right up until exit, right, when the whole exit interview happens. Uh, so traditionally, that has been the understanding of employee experience. Um, however, that is not correct. Employee experiences happen every single day. Right? Employee experience is nothing but your work experience. You know, from the time in the morning when you come in and you sort of swipe into the door, uh, you uh, fire up your laptop, uh, every single interaction that you have in the workplace, every single team that you interact with, it could be finance, it could be legal, mm. all of that, you know, at the start of the day to, towards the end of your day, all of that is making or breaking your employee experience. So the daily experience, mm. your work experience, your ability to uh, do the work that you uh, had planned for the day, that is really what employee experience means. It's, it's not free pizza, it's not ping pong tables, it's about the ability to do the work that you you're supposed to do and do yeah. it well right that's yeah that's very very interesting because the traditional understanding of it is very very yeah. different right george i'm going to throw this question at you so for an smb why is it important to understand employee experience well it's um, uh, you know just two data points to uh, to kind of bring home the point of why it's important the first one is that the percentage of millennials today in the workforce is set to be about 30%. That's going up to be 75% by the year 2025. So 75% of the workforce is going to be born digital. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's the, the one point. The second thing is they're not going to be confined to uh, the gray walls of a cube. They're going to be moving around. About 65% of the companies today have somebody or the other who's, who's mobile in those companies. That's just going to exponentially increase. And so you look at those two parameters and you say, well, if you're not recognizing this today, then we're not preparing for tomorrow. Quick question. Now, well, within, let's say, your team that directly reports into yeah. you, how have you changed, seen this ratio change? All of us are mobile <laughs> always, right? We are working from home. Uh, we are working from different countries. Uh, we, these days, you know, we never put out of office messages we, because we're never out of office. We're always <laughs> in the office. That's an important one. I've stopped doing that yeah. because I don't think there's yeah. ever getting yeah. away because you're always connected. Yeah. 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 So, you know, Ahmed, you, again, coming back to the employee experience, please. <clears throat> How is employee experience connected to customer experience? Is, yeah. is there a connect even? Yeah, it is, right? I mean, you think about it. It's an obvious piece. Uh, your employees are doing work uh, for the organization. Everything they're doing uh, directly or indirectly is for customers. Mm -hmm. If they have a bad experience for whatever reason, you know, the systems that they have access to are uh, not working well or they're troubled at work for whatever reason, right? That's going to have an impact on uh, what delivery they make to the customer. So it's also sort of intuitive. Yeah. But apart from that, there's also data, for example, that shows that 
happier employees, they tend to deliver 81% higher customer satisfaction. So it. it's not just yeah. intuitive, there's also you know, data that clearly shows this a link between uh, employee experience and, and customer experience. Got it, got it. So that you know brings me to the next question. How does cus employee experience impact customer experience? And, and, and I think you, you kind of touched upon that, but Roy, I want you to share a bit more about that. In fact, um, when we look at the employee experience, it has a direct linkage to customer experience. Uh, personally, in the way that I run the operation, uh, definitely I see that the more engaged, the more satisfied employees deliver stronger results. Mm. Uh, not to mention in our business, our partners' organization, more than 50% of them will be engaging with either customer or partners. But many a times, we are focusing on customer experience only. Yeah. And we neglect employee experience. And when employee experience suffer, customer experience suffer. <laughs> got it, got it. And I, um, you know, so when you think of the ex employee experience and how it's influencing and reshaping, the workplace in the Asian market for SMBs. Um, what's what's the dramatic shift we're seeing, or what what are some of the factors that we sh should be observing and learning from, and and sort of right. figuring out a strategy around? Right, right. So, you know, when we speak to SMBs, it's not like they don't get what employee experience means, or even uh, why it is important. They understand it. Right? They understand. So, if you ask them. Uh, do you think it's critical? Uh, uh, many of them say yes, it is critical. The problem is that they don't know how to actually, uh, you know, move ahead with um, uh, better employee experience. Um, so the problem there is they believe that they're providing a really good employee experience. They're very optimistic about it. But when we go to their employees and ask them, hey, what is the kind of experience that you guys are having? Uh, that's not so great. So, this so is, there's a difference this is, in the yeah, perception. Yeah, there's a perception gap. Right? The employer thinks, hey, I'm doing a great job. The employee is like, you know, not really. It's, um, uh, I'm not having such a great um, sort of experience uh, working here as, as much as you would like to believe. Uh, some data points there, uh, you know, we collected, for example, employee satisfaction uh, in uh, SMBs uh, across Asia is less than 60%. And uh, incidentally, even if we look at the productivity levels, it is also less than 60%. So in each market, uh, in fact, we see that when employee experience or employee satisfaction is low, in those same markets, productivity is also low. Right? So coming back to the question, how is employee experience affecting the workplace? Well, the data is clearly showing poor uh, employee experience equal to poor productivity right? and SMBs need to be aware of this fact that you know this is impacting productivity for them. In other words I think it's about being in the flow so everybody finds their flow and enjoys what they're doing and <coughs> are happy and 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 things sort of flow seamlessly you just you yeah, just yeah, get more about, done yeah, right? you, and yeah, you enjoy about, it a yeah, lot it's more. A, it is a scientific concept by the way right? Absolutely, being in the flow, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And, but there's also the difference you know while you, you talk about flow there's also the need for us to differentiate. The SMBs are wanting to differentiate because only when they differentiate can they uh, position themselves differently to their customers, earn more revenue, build yeah. more loyalty, and kind of um, you know build ahead on their business. Similarly, when they look inside the um, in the organization, they have to provide a differentiated experience to every employee that comes in. That's the need of the hour today, Got and it. so. It's mirroring what they have to do with their customers. Their internal customers are also asking for that differentiation. You know, I think this is something that large companies have done really well, which is treat the employees as customers, right? And for SMBs to do that also because very important, specifically because what you said, it's a very competitive world out there. So what's going to differentiate you with your customers? Why are your employees going to stay, right? Um, but yeah, I'm very keen to get to the, the to the conversation around where does where does technology sit in all of this, right? But Roy, I think you you want to say something over here. I think uh, when we look at uh, some data points also, um, in fact, companies with very good, a very strong customer experience have also a very high percentage, more than sixty percent of very engaged employees, right? And very engaged employees actually improve productivity, 
drive uh, better revenue growth, better profitability. Right? Mm. In fact, uh, for companies with very strong or leading in customer experience, the compounded annual growth rate is about 17%, while CX Legacy is about 3%. That's a huge difference. Yes. That's a huge difference. So, what role does technology play in achieving a better employee experience? I think that's the big question, <coughs> right? I mean, that's, that's what's most relevant to us today. Yeah. Um, I think it plays a very, very important role. Uh, and I'm saying this uh, on the back of research, right? Uh, for example, uh, a couple of years ago, Forrester did some research around trying to figure out what are the factors that actually affect employee experience. Because if you think about our work day, so many different things keep happening. And we said that it's the daily experience. Mm -hmm. But which elements exactly are driving employee experience and which are not as much? So uh, what we did is we went out and tested uh, around 75 different factors. Okay. Just to figure out uh, which, is, uh, which of these are affecting uh, employee experience. And we took this to uh, almost 14,000 uh, global information workers. Right? So it's a big, okay. big data set. What we found is that of the 75, only 18 were driving employee experience. Okay, so just 18, 18 factors driving employee experience. Mm. And of these 18, a third were directly related to technology. So technology, yeah. Yeah. very important uh, for uh, employee experience. And think about it, right? Irrespective of the profession you're in, uh, whether you're a doctor or an engineer or you're in IT or software or whatever else it is that you do, you use technology, uh, you know, right from the get go from morning to, to night. So technology plays this massive role and mm. people sort of tend to ignore that, oh, technology is also uh, an, an important part. So as far yeah, as yeah. I go, you know, I would like to tell people that, hey, if you think employee experience, the first thing you should think of is, is technology. Right? Mm. So, Roy, tell me why? Yeah. why do so you maybe let me, let me give some context to that also, sure. right? Uh, we will also think that uh, collaboration is one of the key for business success, right? We work in uh, multiple locations earlier. George mentioned about that. We travel around. Uh, we also have site offices, <coughs> right? Whereby the team will need to get together and collaborate, have conferences and so on. So think back, you know, in your last experience whereby you get involved in a conference call, right? There'll be time being spent to set up, right? Mm. Everybody needs to dial into the conference meeting. You then actually need to set up to make sure that the audio is working well, the video is working well, or even the uh, slides that actually you wanted to present is actually being shared across both online and also inside the office. Pretty much, you know, the, we spend about seven to ten minutes to actually cater for this setup. Right. Happens Just every for day. the purpose. Happens every day to me. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of time wasted. Yeah, a lot of time wasted. And, and you can imagine, sometimes you know, the whereby you face with technical related the issues or challenges, right? This period might be longer, right? 15 minutes, even 20 minutes. And when employees face that, they get frustrated. And frustrated employees reduce in productivities. That's yeah. true. That's it goes true. back to something you were saying earlier about workflow. I think the, the need for collaboration has increased so much yes. more because of technology too, yes. right? And therefore, the kind of technology that you now work with, you know, you have to make different choices with regards to that. Definitely. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's just not, you know, it's about collaboration. There's a lot of time wasted as you try and connect with the others. Uh, but just look at your own uh, devices that you use, mm. right? Slow boot up times. Yep. You're talking about you want to, to transfer a file, you take time to do it. You have OS hangs or you have, you know, different versions of uh, software operating on different uh, on PCs that creates problems. Thankfully, you know, if you look at um, uh, if you look at technology today, technology has the answers to it. Just from an Intel perspective, uh, you know, obtain memory, just the ability to be uh, to be able to process uh, stuff faster, to be able to get up your applications, boot up much faster, that much better. Mm. You have Wi-Fi 6. Um, you, you know, typically, a home has about 10 devices today that connect to the Wi-Fi. Soon, we'll have so many other devices connecting, not just to the home network, but yeah. also to your PC. Right. And IoT, so, right? With IoT. Yeah, so how do you get the Wi-Fi to connect much better, and therefore Wi-Fi 6, which you will find in the <coughs> latest uh, devices from Lenovo as well. So technology has answers. The thing is, we've got to use technology in order to bring about that change in experience uh, as far as the employee is concerned. Yep. That's, that's mm -hmm. a very interesting point. And, you know, you know, at the start of this conversation, I was saying 
you know, people have joined us from several different countries here, from yep. across, you know, Asia Pacific. In every country, do the issues differ? Issues around mm. technology, do they differ in every country? And within a country also, does it differ from, let's say, the larger metropolitan cities to the mm. smaller mm. cities, you know? Uh, what are the different, you know, differences that we're seeing? So maybe let me um, put it in perspective around uh, technology challenges, right? So I'll break them down into three broad categories. One around uh, communication, the other around mobility and uh, end user experience, right? Around communication and infrastructure, these deviate quite uh, slightly around the uh, Asia Pacific region. Uh, and it's also slightly longer term in terms of uh, getting resolution to that. The more mature market, you'll see that the connectivity, communication is actually mo much more seamless. And uh, in emerging markets that actually we operate in, we find that uh, there's still a lot of room for us to improve on. Right? Yeah. So for this to tackle it, uh, it takes slightly longer time. Okay? But uh, when it comes to mobility, the type of devices, when it comes to user experience, the type of devices, then I'll say that uh, pretty much around the markets, around the territories that actually we operate in, it's pretty much similar. right? With adopting the latest technology, you will be able to overcome such challenges. Got it. And, so and if, yes. you know, if, if I may, uh, you know, technology challenges will remain. Uh, the nature of, of these challenges will change. Uh, I think a good way for, uh, for SMBs to think about this is um, to begin listening to their employees and their needs, hmm. um, to pay more attention to uh, what the technology needs are. So we are not saying that uh, you know, uh, you go to your employee and if your employee says, hey, I want this kind of a fancy device and you say, okay, I'm, that's what I'm going to give you. Uh, but at least start, be, you know, considering their needs, the technology needs according to uh, the, de the demands that you're placing on them, uh, what would be a better device. So listening to uh, uh, employees is very important. Unfortunately, our data shows that uh, only 15% um, uh, employers are listening to employees when it comes to uh, purchase mm -hmm. decisions. Right? So that's shocking. Just 15% uh, are um, paying attention to employee needs. So that needs to change. Got it. You know, and, that, and that's very interesting because sometimes asking doesn't bring out the right answers. You know, you can ask somebody something, but yeah. they may not mm -hmm. be able to tell you what exactly yeah. they need or mm -hmm. want, right? Because maybe they themselves don't know. Absolutely. They haven't tried different things. And it's actually very, it'll be very interesting to actually go observe yeah, if, yeah, if opportunity presents. So observe, you know, the team at work. Yeah, and, and that's, see a, how they work that's, a, that's a very scientific way, right? If you think about customers, when we think about customer experience, that's exactly what we, we uh, you know, tell customers to do. Go out, understand, observe, right? Ethnographic research. It applies yeah. as much to employees mm -hmm. as it does to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what can SMBs do to ensure that their employees are more engaged in the workplace, are more productive, you know? And how can, how can, yeah, how can our business partners and channel partners sort of drive that? Yes, I mean, we've got to provide the tools uh, yeah. for them, right? Starting with basics, right? Today, even, uh, uh, we, when we look at the data, there's less than 30% of employees that actually have an access to uh, cloud-based tools or even a single login where, you know, you just log in once and all your applications are available. Mm -hmm. So we got to start at the basics, right? We are at the start of this journey of this transformation, especially in the SMB space, where we've got to make these basic tools for collaboration, for speed, uh, be available to, uh, to employees. Mm -hmm. So if you, yeah. you know, if you think about, uh, we, we say that uh, as, as organizations, we want to be agile, we want to move fast. Right? SMBs have the same uh, sort of aspirations, they want to be very agile. Now what does that actually mean? On the ground, what you're really saying is that if you want to make that happen, uh, your employees need to be fast and agile and flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that translates to. A, yeah. a fast organization <coughs> really means mm -hmm. its employees are very nimble. Yeah, don't and put an out of office ever. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you make that happen, right? How do you how do you make this happen? Um, we talk about um, three types of freedom, right? Giving your employees three types of freedom. The first is this freedom of uh, trying to uh, access and use information mm -hmm. as and when needed. Right? It's a basic thing. Imagine that you are uh, an engineer at your workplace. You need to look up some some papers out there. 
right, on the internet that will help drive your decision making. Mm. Right? So you need to enable these kind of things for the employees that need it. So that's the first type of freedom. Uh, the second type of freedom is uh, letting them um, interact and collaborate. Right? So ensuring that, that you, you, have, you give them systems so that they can uh, collaborate uh, effectively. And the last one is the freedom to be mobile. Mm. Right? I think we were mm. all making the point uh, earlier about mm. um, people are you know, working from different places. Somebody's yeah. in office, somebody's you know, sales guys outside, somebody's working from home. Uh, you have to give uh, your employees that, that freedom to actually uh, continue to work but still be uh, mobile. Mm. And technology obviously plays a large role in yeah. each of these types of Absolutely. It's freedom. really interesting how you define the three freedoms. I think it's, you know, it yeah, really works, makes sense. Frameworks, yeah, frameworks, yeah, it really makes sense. Yes. Maybe yeah. I'll just add another point, right? Uh, beyond uh, looking at the device itself, I think uh, employers must also look at if uh, there is actually different understanding between what employees think about the uh, support uh, that is actually being offered by the internal IT department versus what the IT department is really able to deliver, right? Actually, about 43% of the employees in SMB thinks that uh, the IT department do not have a sufficient training, do not have a sufficient know-how to actually go about resolving their day-to-day -day set of challenges. Mm. But at the same time, the IT department will think that, hey, you know, this set of issues should be resolved by the device uh, vendor. Right? So there's obviously this disconnect yeah. and uh, with the disconnect, employer will think that, hey, my department uh, or my company <coughs> might not uh, have the right skill sets to actually operate and drive, you know, the business It's not business cool enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that actually creates, you know, uncertainty and drive down employee and ex experience again. Absolutely. And that's interesting. I think we were talking uh, offline about this, about, you know, how much can SMBs offer? Like, you're, you're a small and medium business, there's only so many things that you can do. So how do we go about addressing these pain points? What is the role of the channel partners in addressing these pain points meaningfully for their customers? So if I, if I may begin, right, so as a business partner, as a channel partner, so you can help in, you know, uh, pushing the thinking of your customers, your SMB customers in, in three different contexts. Uh, the first one is um, help them think about what's going uh, wrong right now in terms of the basics, mm. right? Devices are crashing, the, um, uh, uh, the space is insufficient on, on, on the devices, the storage space. Um, all of these basic issues shouldn't be happening because when they happen, they, they stop their employees uh, in their tracks like right mm -hmm. away. So mm -hmm. these are basics. Mm -hmm. And I think what uh, channel partners, business partners can do is, uh, you know, you guys go out uh, and uh, help your customers try to figure out and fix these basic issues right now. So that's something that you guys can do right away. The other thing that you can do is help them think about the interim. And by that I mean, uh, you know, employees have different needs. Like the, the CEO uh, is, uh, has, has a very different need. Frontline mm. sales is very different need. Yeah. Somebody at back office has very different technology needs. So nudge your SMB customers towards this thinking that, mm. hey, you need to customize the kind of technology that you are offering these employees. Right? Yeah. So think about employee personas. Mm. Like what yeah. are their work needs? What yeah. are the behaviors? And make sure that the uh, technology that they use in terms of form factor, you know, design, mm. speed, whatever it be, connectivity, uh, that is uh, tailored to their, their work needs. So that's mm. the second mm. one is the interim, right? And the last one is push them to think about the future. There's so many amazing things in terms of technology being available today, right? Coming from uh, from you guys, uh, help them think about you know what's what's coming up next. How can their employees work better with some of these new age devices? How can they connect better to customers with these new age devices, right? So help mm -hmm. them sort of plan for the future. I think if you think about these three things, that's a good starting point in how you approach your. Mm. Uh, your SMB customers. Yeah. You really like the number three, don't you? Yeah. That's another three, <laughs> set of three over there. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there's another dimension that uh, we also look at uh, from a procurement perspective, right? Uh, in the SMB environment, not all device buyers are actually IT professional or are actually pro uh, procurement professional. Many a times, they are actually managers, they are actually business owners that uh, make those decisions. 
So for business partner perspective, it's important for us to understand and you know to really analyze what is their pain point, right? Where are the issues and challenges that the uh, customer is facing? And also listen to the employees, right? To uncover bigger, more opportunities. Yeah, I think to start doing this though, um, when we sell a solution, we have to take a very different approach, right? Absolutely. So you've got to be consultative. You've yeah. got to um, ask more questions and kind of understand where your customer's needs are. Just the basics of selling. Mm. Mm. But we've got to do it more and more because yeah. it has to be consultative. Ask the question, what are you going to use this for? Where, yeah. how, right? And that will get you into the right mode of selling to, to your SMB customer. Yeah, I think it's almost like you're investing. You're investing in their growth and therefore your growth along with your customers. And Absolutely. on that note... You're a partner, right? Yeah. You're, you are a business partner. So live that Absolutely. Live that role. Live the being partner. partner. Yeah, right? be the partner. partner. And on that note, yeah, let's cut to our anthem on selling smarter. Look, things are changing fast for small businesses. A new generation of employees are driving new expectations, especially for their devices. These guys, you don't want to hold them back. They're your heartbeat. The big time problem solvers, go getters, and new media masters, value adders, and future leaders. Until you hand them a laptop that takes longer to boot than the sun takes to rise. They'll use it, but probably just to print their resumes. Introducing the new Lenovo ThinkBook. It's packed with features for working smarter, no matter how your team works, with a design that inspires them to perform at a higher level every single day. Business grade support from real helpful human beings and ThinkShield security that brings all the protection without any of the hassle. Now that's the sweet spot for any business. Give them the tools and they'll give you their all. It's time to go with ThinkBook by Lenovo. Built for business, designed for you. Welcome back. Um, so we were talking about being a partner and not and, and selling with a very, very consultative approach when you're a channel partner for an SMB. And I think that kind of brings it to my next question. What qualities should SMBs look for when they are investing in technology? And how can mm. you, as a channel partner, enable that decision or drive that decision, influence it? So, yeah. So maybe let me first start. Right? Yeah. Uh, we also discussed quite a bit around the new generation uh, workforce that's coming in. 57% uh, of them right now is actually millennials or Gen Z workforce. Right? Uh, they can appreciate the importance of uh, having business grade, a uh, very robust you know, the, uh, business PC for them to actually work on. But at the same time, they are very concerned around the aesthetic look of uh, the device that they carry. Right? Uh, they want to make sure that uh, it represents them as a millennial workforce. Right? Mm. So in fact, uh, this is where you know, the, the uh, decision maker, the device uh, buyer, will then need to actually make some compromise. How do I satisfy the uh, new gen employees uh, at the same time keep my uh, business uh, secure and safe? Yeah, right? so there's tools, there's freedom, there's security, there's features, <coughs> looks. Yes. And many times, you know, they resort into buying consumer graded devices, right? Whereby from a feature, from a configuration perspective, from a security perspective, <coughs> it's actually not at the business level. Right? Mm. So this is where I think uh, the thing will come into play, right? Exactly, it come into this uh, sweet spot whereby it provide not only the business grade requirement, right? Around security, we talk about TPM 2.0. Around security, we talk about Thing Shutter, Thing Shield. Around collaboration, we talk about uh, the uh, Skype hotkeys and so on, mm. right? But at the same time, keep to the stylish design, right? That resonate with the Gen Z employees. Got it. Got Roy it. brings a very good point. Um, SMBs are outcome driven. And so we've got to go understand that. And they're about, when it's about outcomes, they're trying to prepare for, uh, for the future. They're trying to be future ready. Mm. So the business partner has to adopt that same mentality. Go into the discussion with trying to give um, uh, 
suggestions and advice on how the SMB can be future ready. Mm. Roy brought about a great um, uh, point about how devices then help you be future ready. And so bring those devices and bring that conversation in, mm. ask the questions, and then you will get to the right answers. Mm. Yeah. You know, earlier we talked about issues, uh, challenges, right? Services are a big thing, right? Mm. You know, okay, so we've got all these laptops and tablets and what about servicing them? And we talked also about um, how employees think it's the IT team's problem and the IT team yeah. thinks it's the channel partner's problem, yeah. you know. So when we talk about services in this workplace transformation journey, um, how can channel partners help, you know, and enhance the mm. experience for the customers and therefore also for their employees? In fact, uh, we definitely think that a premier device uh, deserve a premium service, right? Okay. And uh, how often we actually make some calls to the uh, call center, right? Uh, and we have an agent at the uh, opposite line and uh, start to actually ask us some sequential questions, right? Okay. You have a list of the uh, first question, second, third, you know, they even ask if uh, you have power on your machine. Right? <laughs> so under those contexts, right? Scripted uh, <laughs> questions. And uh, in Lenovo, we saw that uh, as actually one of the key pain points from a customer perspective and uh, to actually support our business partner, we introduced this uh, service called Premier Support. Okay. And uh, in fact, with Premier Support, uh, customer will be able to access to elite engineers right, across 100 uh, territories that actually we operate in. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, elite engineers will uh, go with an unscripted uh, troubleshooting for the customer. Okay. Right? So the customer will have a peace of mind knowing that the agent that is actually at the other end of the line understand the issues and the challenges that actually they are facing. Mm -hmm. Not that's going for script. Yeah. 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 No, I think that's a fantastic solution. So I'm kind of going to, going to sum up here before we go into questions from the audience. So we talked about, you know, the nature of the market itself today, and as an SMB, how you're very future and growth driven. And then you, your employees come from different segments, you know, um, different expectations, different roles, and even. Amongst SMBs in the Asia Pacific market, there are differences because of infrastructure, because of industries, even because of where you are in that country's journey path, right? And cultural differences. Given all of this, and we've also said that channel partners uh, need to be more consultative and really play the role of a partner. To sum up, then, what is the pitch? If I'm a channel partner and I'm going out there and meeting a customer, you know, what is it that I'm really telling them in a few sentences? How do I go about this? Let me start off uh, over here. So, I mean, from a technology perspective, we've talked about it. We've talked about how uh, employee experiences are connected to how um, customers then um, get benefits from the SMB. But when you look at technology, data is there to show that um, you can get 11 hours in a week back if you have the right technology. Or wow. the other way of okay. looking at it is you lose those 11 hours if you don't have the right technology with you. Mm -hmm. You know, technology obso obsolescence is, uh, is going to add costs to the, to, to the SMB's uh, business. And it's just not, uh, you know, older technology. It is security related costs. It is just productivity. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to, if, if we summarize everything and what I take home really is that we've got to get ahead of uh, the curve when it comes to giving the latest technology to your employees so that that will then transfer into mm. the best experience for your customers. Mm. And also to influence how your business grows. Yes. Right? Yeah. So fundamentally, right, uh, when a business partner were to work with a customer, uh, from an SMB perspective, customer clearly understand how important it is, you know, with regards to security features, durability of the product, uh, service support that actually they will get out from, you know, the buying the device and uh, collaboration, you know, tools that is actually being made available, right? But uh, the uh, partner, business partner, will still need to actually, you know, to have a sense of what exactly is the intrinsic or underlying needs from the customer and advise them accordingly. So to the business partner, I'll recommend them to work in this way, right? To think SMB, to think ThinkBook. Awesome, fantastic. Thank you so much. I think that brings us to a close of 
this conversation that that I had questions on at least mm. and now over to questions from the audience I and I think it's been absolutely fascinating listening to each one of you and and the information you've shared you know Amit with the, with the numbers that you've thrown and you know George what you've talked about from your sales experience and how to really pitch to the customer what are we what is the role that we're playing as a channel partner and Roy you've talked about the technology and collaboration and, yes. and features and design etc so now let's see what questions the audience has for us yep. um, the first one is this what is the future of work um, and how will workplaces evolve is that for me you could take that <coughs> let me get my crystal ball out about the future of work okay <laughs> Sound uh, effects. <laughs> <laughs> so the future of work is obviously uh, going to be decided by the kind of technology that's coming at us. And there's a lot of exciting technology coming on. You know, there's AI, there's machine learning, there's RPA, automation, there's IoT, right? There's very, very interesting stuff coming our way. Um, meant to help us, and certainly it will, but uh, it's always a double-edged sword. Technology is always a double-edged sword. So while it will bring, uh, you know, all the promises that it's making, you know, making uh, work more efficient, making it more safe, making it more convenient, all of these things will happen. But the way that this will also change is uh, a small part of jobs will actually become redundant and will totally go away. Like those jobs will no longer exist. So that's going to happen. But the majority of jobs will actually transform. Hmm. So they won't go away, but, but the way that you do them will, will change, right? So imagine if you will, maybe 10 years from now, five years from now, you're not working on your own, but you also have like an assistant personal bot with you that is sort of guiding you on, on the decision uh, you're, that you're making. Hmm. Uh, so all of these things are, are going to happen. The downside being some jobs will go, uh, a lot of transformation. But what that means for, for SMBs, is that um, a lot of reskilling needs to happen. Yeah. Right? If, if yeah. the nature of work changes, it means that you have to rethink which kind of people you're hiring, uh, which kind of skills are needed, and the ones, you know, the employees that you already have, you want to make sure that you uh, reskill them. So reskilling is going to be a, a big part of you know how mm. you handle mm. this uh, uh, amazing future coming at us. And what you what you said is very interesting because okay, so while some jobs are becoming obsolete, the rest are transforming. There are absolutely new ones also being created, and we've yeah. seen that mm -hmm. especially in the last couple of decades because of technology, that the way we work and the kind of roles that are there today. They weren't there 20 years ago, right? Um, so moving on to the next question, and this is a uh, this is a rudimentary one, but and I think George, you should take this because you were talking about the attitude that we should have as as channel partners. So the question is this: most of our conversations with our customers are very transactional, uh, like which is the best PC in the market, or why I should consider a particular brand. And in this situation, how do we talk to them about larger issues? Oh, this is a very good question. It's the common trap of, uh, of uh, where you, you end up in front of a customer and then the first question is, give me the best PC. Yeah. It's almost like Googling yeah. for uh, the best answer possible. And, well, I, and, and I have a metaphor here. It's like you're, you're trying to... S you're trying to sell the dish that you can make with the carrot and not the carrots themselves, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Nicely put. So then the question in, to ask really is, the best PC for what? And thankfully, our technology industry has progressed so much today that you have PCs for the specific, or you have technology, just not PCs, for the specific need uh, that is at hand. So if you're a gamer, you have a gaming PC. And we all know about the gaming PCs that are yeah, on, you know, the, the current rage. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a graphics designer, you, you want to create a PC. Uh, Roy talked about the fact that if you're an SMB, you've got ThinkBook. ThinkBook has been created grounds up to address that specific need. Mm -hmm. And so it is just not enough for us to ask, um, you know, give me the best PC. It is the, the response back should be the best PC for what? Mm -hmm. And then look at those needs and then yeah, suggest yeah. what is the best PC. Yeah. And thankfully, like I said, we have the answers today. You don't have to you know, come back disappointed saying, sorry, I don't have, I don't have an answer to your need today. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting how we keep coming back to questions. You know, right at the beginning, we said, you know, why are employees staying? Why are they leaving? You know, yeah. ask the questions. And we just keep coming back to that yeah. again and again. On that note, the next question from the audience, uh, based on your experience, what are some of the mm -hmm. key challenges 
that device buyers or employers face? Hmm. Maybe let me take that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> so, um, we also discussed quite a bit around the challenges that the SMB is actually facing. In fact, costs continue to be actually a big pressure right? uh, in a highly competitive environment. 45% uh, of the SMB uh, felt that actually their uh, budget is inadequate to actually you know, to meet their needs in the uh, IT requirement. And uh, beyond that, 87% uh, of these uh, SMB also knows that uh, it's important for them to equip the uh, employees with uh, the right set of uh, devices to ensure that actually they can continue to work uh, on productivity. Uh, nevertheless, uh, with that uh, situation, they felt that they are actually uh, tight on hands, right? do not know what to do. That's where business partner and uh, us, you know, to, we should really come in and not to sell a PC to them, right? To really identify where are their pain points, ask the questions again, right? Yeah. And uh, come back with a solution that really meets the customer's requirement. I think there's a bit of an ed educational element to it in that mm -hmm. in being consultative, you're helping them look beyond the obvious yes. pressing demands of their business and you know sort of look at the bigger picture which sometimes you know when you're running a business every day it's it's, yeah. it's sometimes it's hard to pull back and look at something that you haven't been focusing on exactly. um, the next question i think this one is for you george why is employee engagement a business problem for smbs um well three three points i'd like to make uh, why is it important um the first one is that SMBs are are in a very we talked about it today are in a in a tight budget situation, right? Mm -hmm. They run a very tight ship. Now, when you're in that kind of a situation, you've got to retain the talent that you have because research after research has shown that it is easier to retain a talent than to hire a new one and train and then go through the process again. So the first thing is cost, right? You've got to retain the best talent that you have because that talent will then uh, you know, deliver the customer uh, benefit for you. The second one is, and I uh, research by uh, Deloitte comes to mind. Uh, Twenty seventeen, they did um, they did a research on employee engagement, and what they saw was that en employee engagement actually fell by seventeen percent as compared to last year. So, wow. and this was among SMBs. And so, if you see the employee engagement driving employee engagement is actually a challenge mm. uh, you've got to go address it why because if your employees are engaged then they're going to give their level best into yeah. the job at hand yeah. right they will stay overnight to get the task completed as against an employee that's not engaged yeah. and then finally i think what comes to mind is technology and how you can use technology to deliver that employee experience and that customer experience to you. Yeah, if I, I think, you know, yeah. if, if I may add, uh, you, you spoke about retention, you know, and that's so important, uh, given that SMBs anyway have a smaller employee set. Um, a great example is from Starbucks, by no means an SMB, but uh, because they are so focused on the employee experience, right? Every time they plan new initiatives, they first check with their employees. Mm -hmm. Now, because of this, uh, what we've seen is that at Starbucks, the uh, churn rate is actually half of the industry average. Mm -hmm. right? So that's a it's a big, mm -hmm. big uh, data point there, uh, right there, you know, mm -hmm. showing us that mm -hmm. uh, better uh, employee experience is actually going to help you make sure that your employees stick around with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And George, what you were saying, um, it kind of really circled back to the definition of employee experience that we started off talking about, yeah. right? Uh, and some of the facts that you were presenting around that and, and finding the flow and productivity as well. It's, it really just comes back to that. Um, I think we have time for just two more questions. Um, so this one is, how have millennials and Gen Z reshaped the workplace? Well, the millennials are coming, right? It's always they are there. They're here already, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we always speak about you know millennials in this fashion that oh my god, they're going to come and and now they're changing everything. Um, Once upon a time, somebody spoke to somebody else about us like that, right? <laughs> and yeah, times have changed. You just gave away your age. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you can't see, yeah. So millennials, yes. So um, you know, so used to technology uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, exposed to it at a very, very early age, uh, not just millennials, even all the generations that are termed, coined after them, you know, the Gen Z and, uh, and all of the following generations. Uh, a great example, uh, my, um, 
my sister, uh, she was unwell once and uh, she was having trouble cooking that day. Mm -hmm. So my nephew, who was just about turning four, you know, he says, uh, mommy, no problem. You know, he brings her, her mobile phone and he's like, we can just uh, use this app to order food. Order food. Mm -hmm. Right. So for them, that's the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how they think about technology. Mm -hmm. That if you click a button, technology is going to solve that problem for you. Right? And mm -hmm. It's going to be fast. So that's mm -hmm. the way they think about uh, technology. You know, imagine these guys growing up, joining the workforce. Yeah. Right? Think about things like how uh, uh, yeah. commonplace Wi-Fi is today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if, if you have a millennial coming in using mm -hmm. Wi-Fi at home, Wi-Fi in the cafe, at the airport, yeah. And then coming to the workplace, but the workplace tells him that, yeah, hey, yeah. you know, uh, here's a wire for you to connect to the internet. And mm -hmm. by the way, these are uh, 50 sites that you cannot go to. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I imagine the kind of, uh, you know, uh, shock that millennials going to get. Well, and even for us today, you know, going back to some of the references we were talking about earlier, incidents at home or at work. Um, how we use technology in our personal lives is really how we possibly Absolutely. want to be able yeah. to use technology in, in work the workplace, yeah. right? Nice people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's uh, that fluidity of it all and it's yeah. it's what's useful to me, what's meaningful to me, right. to what I have to achieve. Yeah, and, and what I have to will do today. be un unforgiving, right? They will switch jobs if they don't find mm -hmm. uh, this kind mm -hmm. of uh, experience, technology experience at the workplace. Yeah. Okay, so time for one last question mm -hmm. and this one's for you, Roy. Mm -hmm. Why did you create the thing book isn't ThinkPad a good enough PC for business users? Ah, okay, good question actually. Uh, I must agree that the ThinkPad franchise is legendary, right? Uh, one of the best commercial notebook that you can find in the market. But when we also listen to our customer, the SMB, you know, they also come back with feedback saying that, hey, the business class notebooks have a lot of features and functions that I actually do not need, do not require. So they have to cough up you know, the much larger cost for them to acquire business grade notebook. But at the other side of it, if earlier we discussed about it, if they go and procure the consumer range of a grade of devices, they then expose to all these security related the challenges, you know, the robust robustness of the machine and so on. So things will come in at the sweet spots exactly, right? Built for business, designed for new millennials. Essentially, you've gone out there, asked your customers a whole lot of questions, <laughs> understood what they need, and then built the thing. Exactly. Like, mm. Fabulous. Well, that's all we have time for. It's been a very, very exciting live cast. Thank you so much Thank you. to Thank all you of you for joining us Thank and to every one of our viewers. Until next time, this is us signing off from Thank Selling you. Smarter by Knowing What to Pitch. Sure.